Lily Schneider was raised on an island in the Pacific Northwest. She earned her BFA in writing, literature, and publishing from Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts. She is currently a candidate in the University of Wyoming MFA program in writing. Her fiction and nonfiction has appeared in numerous print and online publications, including the Huffington Post blog, McSweeney's Internet Tendency, and Flash, the international magazine of short, short stories. Tonight, she brings us a story from her home state with Island Outlaw. Let's give a warm Cheyenne welcome to Lily Schneider. Thanks, guys. All right. So since Wyoming is known for its outlaws, tonight I thought I would bring you a story about a legendary outlaw from my own corner of the West except that his story takes place in this century. And if you're thinking, well then, he's not an outlaw, maybe ask yourself, who is? How do we draw the line between hero and criminal? This is Colton Harris Moore. It's 2009, he's 17 years old, he's somewhere in the middle of the rainforest. Everything that you see in this picture is stolen, including the camera, which was recovered by police long before Colton was. To understand how Colton was able to become one of the most beloved fugitives of his time, you also need to understand where he's from, the San Juan Islands in Washington State. They are remote and sparsely populated by non-Wyoming standards and densely covered in rainforest. In the past couple of decades, the shorelines of the San Juans have mostly been gobbled up by multi-million dollar vacation homes. But Colton grew up in a trailer. His mother was an alcoholic, his father was abusive, actually tried to strangle Colton to death when Colton was 12. Um, at nine, Colton was diagnosed with ADHD and depression, he had trouble in school, trouble making friends, and from the time that he was seven, he would escape into the wilderness for days at a time. And to survive, he would steal supplies from those empty multi-million dollar vacation homes. And he got caught a lot. By the time he was 14, he had four convictions for stolen property, and by his fifth, when he was 17, he was put in a halfway house to await sentencing. But he's an outlaw, of course. He does not await. He escapes into the woods, and here's where he begins the spree that would make him a fugitive legend on par with D.B. Cooper in the Northwest. So he steals supplies from houses, maybe a couple laptops. At one point, he orders bear mace and a pair of $6,500 night vision goggles from a homeowner's computer. Sometimes he would just come inside the house, eat ice cream, take a hot bath, and a nap. Obviously, these are not the heists of a high-profile criminal. What keeps making headlines in the Northwest is the fact that Colton keeps getting away with it. The police know that he's behind these burglaries, but they can't catch him for one year. And they can't catch him for two years. And the more they can't catch him, the more they look like incompetent buffoons because what kind of police force can't capture a teenage boy on an island? <laughs> Once, they corner him, but Colton runs into the woods barefoot and disappears, which gives him his outlaw name, the Barefoot Bandit. Northwesterners write ballads about him. Graffiti artists write his name under overpasses in Seattle. <laughs> now, his Facebook fan page has over 50,000 members and several marriage proposals. <laughs> Wild West outlaws were actually able to read about themselves in newspapers and dime novels while they were still alive. Colton had the internet and left these footprints at a grocery store. Then he stole a plane. He took this Cessna from a Yakima airport. He taught himself to fly by reading uh, the manual for the plane. There's video footage of him in the hangar just looking through it and by playing flight simulator computer games and researching online. When he got into the airplane, it was not only the first time that Colton Harris Moore had ever flown a plane, it was also the first time that he had ever been inside of an airplane. And it was one of five airplanes that he would go on to steal. So at this point, the FBI puts out a $10,000 bounty on his head. SWAT team members are hiding outside of his mother's house. And his fans start to worry. What if, like so many outlaws before him, Colton doesn't make it out of this alive? In May 2010, police find this note and $100 cash at a veterinary clinic in Raymond, Washington. They follow a string of car thefts to Indiana where someone has stolen a Cessna airplane. That plane is later found crashed in the shoreline waters off of the Bahamas. This is a kid 
who was told all his life that he would go nowhere. This is a kid who dropped out of high school. And now, he just flew himself to the Bahamas. <laughs> Let it be known, the American police never caught the barefoot bandit. Colton was apprehended by Royal Bahaman police when they shot out the motor of a boat that he was stealing. He threw his laptop in the water, had a gun that he put to his head. But ultimately, he was brought in barefoot. Colton was convicted of over 100 counts and $1.4 million in theft and sentenced to seven years in jail. We tend to idolize our outlaws in the, North, or <laughs> the Wild West. Uh, and that's pretty much the history of the Southern West. Um, but a folk hero can't just be a common criminal. A folk hero has to conduct his crimes in such a way that we feel he's on our side. Colton stole in a way from the government because it took so many resources to unsuccessfully chase him. He also stole from Microsoft millionaires. They had planes and he had nothing. The same system that made so many of his victims wealthy had failed him all his life. But for two years, the Barefoot Bandit was able to overcome that system and beat it. And if we can't forgive that system for leaving kids like Colton behind, if we can't forgive parents who neglect and abuse their children, if we can't forgive the widening gap between the rich and the poor in this country that allows once wild Western outposts to become playgrounds for the rich while locals live in trailers in the woods, can't we forgive Colton? Although we do forget that every criminal has victims. Would you like Colton less if I told you that he also stole from local people, local businesses, people as poor as himself? Because he did, and people in the San Juans were thrilled when the barefoot bandit was finally caught. But Colton is reportedly now good friends with the man who owned that first plane. Perhaps that man is able to imagine the feeling Colton must have had when that plane first lifted off of the ground. In 2014, Colton sold the life rights to his story to Fox Studios for $1.4 million. <laughs> that is almost enough to pay restitution to all of his victims. <laughs> Billy the Kid was shot dead at 21, but Cassidy escaped to Argentina. Colton got a job at his lawyer's law office in Seattle, but he says he would like to design airplanes. He says he regrets the crimes he committed in his youth. He says he is not the barefoot bandit anymore. But once he also said this, quote, People will call you insane right up until you accomplish exactly what you said you would. The opinions of uninspired people don't matter for anything. Just believe in yourself. Thank you.